The deep sea is still one of the Earth's best kept secrets, with creepy, fascinating, and largely undiscovered animals calling it home. But did you know that there are also unassuming treasures hidden at the bottom of the sea? Lying around on the seabed four kilometers below the surface are a bunch of rocky nodules. They definitely don't look spectacular, but they're pretty valuable. These clumps, that kind of just look like ordinary rocks at first sight, are called polymetallic or manganese nodules, and they could save the future of electric mobility. But harvesting them could also destroy ecosystems deep down in the ocean, one of the few places left untouched on Earth. So what are these precious rocks, and should we bring them up to the surface? Cobalt, copper, and nickel are metals you might not even think about in daily life. And while it might seem like these common metals are all around us, they're actually much rarer than you might think. We rely on them for batteries, smartphones, laptops, electric cars, photovoltaic systems, and other types of power storage. The extractable amount of copper, cobalt, and nickel is very limited. Some of these resources might soon be exhausted. This is especially the case with cobalt. The worldwide demand for it is estimated to double by 2026. Most of the cobalt reserves are based in Congo and Australia, and they're often mined under very bad working conditions. And this is where the polymetallic nodules from the seabed come back into play. Yeah. According to estimates, yeah. they contain around 270 million tons of nickel, 230 million tons of copper, yeah. and 50 million tons of cobalt. Yeah. 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 The nodules are lying around here, here, and here in pretty big amounts at the bottom of the sea, at a depth of between 3,500 and 6,500 meters. It took them extremely long to grow, and they are in an environment that is not at all well explored yet. Polymetallic nodules need a good oxygen supply to grow, as well as a stable flow of Arctic deep water. How exactly those nodules grow is a pretty complex process, but to put it really simply, it starts with very small organic particles like shell splinters or parts of shark teeth. Over millions of years, metallic compounds dissolved by the seawater accumulate around those particles and grow about a centimeter every million years, until they're potato or even cauliflower-sized. The first uh, findings of polymetallic nodules uh, were actually done by the Challenger expedition in uh, 1874. That's been a long, long time, uh, and they, they just brought up a few with uh, the, the tools where they took uh, sediment samples. Matthias Heckel is part of the Mining Impact Project, which assesses collectors and their impact on ocean ecosystems. Um, and the interest uh, for economics started really in the, in the 70s. People found out that, that these metals are in there and that that's where it sparked and more of exploration uh, happened. So it's not only scientists who are interested in polymetallic nodules. A lot of companies are just waiting to explore and to use them for their battery-powered products. Deep-sea mining advocates say getting the nodules out of the sea is more sustainable than onshore mining. For the nodules, no forests need to be cut down and no mining galleries have to be built. There would be no child labor and no toxic fumes. Instead, one could just fish the handy nodules from the seabed, theoretically. But one of the problems engineers are facing is the high pressure deep down in the sea. No machines have been able to harvest the nodules on the seabed in a commercial way, yet. Right now, they're testing machines that look a little bit like vacuum cleaners. Different companies, national agencies, and associations are exploring how to exploit these polymetallic nodules by building prototypes of machines that might be able and allowed to harvest them in the future. The Belgian Demigroup, for example, developed another collector in 2021 and has already started testing it. We requested an interview, but received no answer. The biggest concern is the impact this technology can have on marine wildlife, because it's not just picking up nodules when it vacuums the seabed. 
So who makes the rules that govern the deep sea? It's a UN organization called the International Seabed Authority. In 1994, the EU and 167 countries signed a multilateral agreement that regulates deep sea mining. It's based on the Convention on the Law of the Sea, which says that a country can only exploit an area within 200 nautical miles of its coast. It underlines that the world's oceans are humankind's common heritage. So far, the Seabed Authority has given out 31 licenses for deep-sea mining, 19 of them specifically for mining polymetallic nodules. The license holders pay a fee of 500,000 US dollars to the UN Authority to explore deep-sea mining in a certain area. Countries, but also associations, agencies, and private applicants can apply for such an exploration license. The Indian, South Korean, and Polish governments, as well as Chinese and UK associations, are among the license holders. Tanya Stratman is another researcher working on polymetallic nodules. She and her team have discovered that the nodules play an important role for the seabed fauna. We saw that a lot of these manganese nodules have associated fauna. So you have glass sponges um, that look a little bit like, for example, tulips. So you have long stalks and then you have this main, main body on top and they um, really grow attached to these nodules and they can host a variety of species. So here is the dilemma. While critics worry about deep sea mining's environmental impacts, Proponents say climate change and the need to transition to a clean energy economy is an urgent reason to press ahead and harvest the seabed. We're talking about thousands of square kilometers being destroyed per year. The main impact is that in these areas, the biological active uh, uh, zone, the top five to 10 centimeters of the deep sea are completely uh, wiped out and destroyed together with the fauna. <clears throat> and the, the, any kind of, of recolonization or recovery of this system um, for the soft sediment will take uh, hundreds to thousands of years. Many deep sea microorganisms and animals could be disturbed or destroyed by the machines. Even just scientific exploration has left its mark. We figured out that after more than 25 years, the, most of the parameters that were analyzed didn't recover fully. So you can expect that even the part that might recover, that is independent of the nodules, that they will definitely be gone, will need decades to centuries if it can recover at all. The mining could even disrupt the complex food chains in the ocean. So, is there any way to make deep sea mining sustainable? That is not sustainable because it's not regrowing. Very simple as that. I think we can already make up our mind as society if we want to accept this impact or not. But if we shouldn't be touching these deep sea nodules, how can we get enough of the metals we need for cleaner energy? First, we can reuse what we already have by pulling precious metals out of batteries and other devices. Several companies are already optimizing the recycling process. Batteries could become circular products. Watch how this could work in our video on the afterlife of batteries. And we can reduce our consumption and use the things that contain these precious metals much longer. What do you think about deep sea mining? Let us know in the comments and don't forget to subscribe.